Let's take a look at rounding measurements in a science class. In science, it's very common for students to be asked to round a measurement or a number to make it easier to work with. Rounding also make numbers easier to compare and essentially easier to look for relationships and patterns amongst them. And so it's a very common task for students to have to complete. So let's just do a quick review and recap of what the basics of rounding might look like. We'll start by rounding some examples involving the mass of this rock. So imagine we took this rock and we put it on a triple beam balance or on a digital scale and we came up with a mass of 364.823 grams. Now that's a fairly detailed and complex number. Uh, might be tricky to look for patterns related to that. It might get confusing. It might be a little hard to communicate. Um, and so we're going to go through a process of rounding this down to a simpler number. And we'll start with an example where we would round this to the nearest thousandth. Now, if you know about this, you might say to yourself, well, it's already to the nearest thousandth. And in fact, that is correct, because the nearest thousandth means three places past the decimal point. So if my decimal point is here, the nearest thousandth would be one, two, three places past that decimal point. And so that number, as is, is rounded to the nearest thousandth. But what if instead you were asked to round it to the nearest hundredth? Now, as you might imagine, the nearest hundredth is not quite as many decimal points. In fact, it's only two places past the decimal. So here's my decimal. The hundredth would be one, two places. So that's where we want to end up. But in order to figure out what that final number is going to look like, we actually have to look at the next digit, in this case, the three. And the rule is simple. If that digit is less than 5, then you can remove it altogether and you are done. If the number is 5 or greater, then you need to look to the previous digit and round it up to the next number. So in this case, if that 3 were bigger, if it were 5 or bigger, then you would change your 2 into a 3 and then you would be done. But of course, in this case, we do not round up we round down. So that 3 being less than 5 can just be removed altogether. And here's our final answer rounded to the nearest hundredth. Now, what if we want to go further and round to the nearest tenth? As you can imagine, that is one place past the decimal point. So here's my decimal point. Here's where we want to end up. And in order to do this, we have to look at the next digit. And those same rules are going to apply. If that digit is less than 5, like it is, we can just remove it. If it were to be greater than 5, we would, in this case, round the 8 up to a 9. But because it's a 2, we can just remove it all together, and we are left with 364.8 grams. That is rounded to the nearest tenth. We could also be asked to round to the nearest whole number. Now, the nearest whole number has no decimals past it. So if we look at the 4 in this example, that's really the whole number that we're talking about. We want to end there. So we have to look at the decimal point and the one digit past it in order to figure this out. And so that number, being less than 5, you would remove it. And if it's greater than 5, you would round up. So in this case, it's an 8. And that's going to bump our 4 up to a 5. And so rounding this number to the nearest whole number turns it into 365 grams. And so that's just a quick review of some simple rounding for masses here. Uh, let's look at one more quick example. This time we'll use length. And so I have a ruler with a colored pencil. And we're going to measure how long the colored pencil is. So I'm just going to zoom in here. And what we see is that the very tip of the colored pencil is in between 14 and 15 centimeters. And if I look really carefully, it's in between the 8th and 9th line that separates 14 and 15. Um, and those are millimeters, also known as tenths of a centimeter. So what this measurement really looks like to me is 14.85 centimeters. Now if I take that number, and let's say I want to round it to the nearest tenth, I'm going to follow the rules that we already outlined, and we're going to look one digit past the tenths place. Now in this example, the 8 
is my tenths place. And so I have to look at the number to the right of that, which is a five here. And our rules say that whenever we have five or greater, we have to round up. So we'll take that five off and we'll round the eight up to a nine, and we're left with 14.9 centimeters. So that's our simple process for rounding. Hopefully this was a helpful review for you. There is a quick practice worksheet down in the description. Thanks for watching.